This is a quick tutorial covering the functionality of the Z Repeat It plugin for ZBrush 4R8. After you have the plugin installed and ZBrush is launched, simply navigate to the Z plugin palette up at the top here, and then in here you'll locate the Z Repeat It tab, and this is where the plugin will be located. I'm simply just going to dock the plugin panel to the side here by coming up to the top and clicking this button. So the Z Repeat It plugin will allow you to store Z scripts and process them across the selected subtool, visible subtools, or all subtools in your scene. If at any time you would like more information on Z Repeat It, simply click the icon here and this will open up a cheat sheet. In here you'll have the link to the video you're currently watching. You will also have a download link to grab the latest version. And then you'll have additional information on what all the buttons do inside the Z Repeat It plugin. So the basic functionality of Z Repeat It is that it'll allow you to take Z scripts and then apply them across selected subtools, visible subtools, or all subtools in your scene. Now Z Repeat It comes standard with a few Z scripts already included. So if you come over here and click on the selected Z script button here, this will display a drop down, and this will show you all the default Z scripts that are currently stored with Z Repeat It. So let's say I want to come through and I want to inverse the mask across all of Earthquake here. So I just come to this drop down, select inverse mask, and now the inverse mask Z script will be selected. Now I can take this Z script and now process it across my model. So if I would like to inverse the mask across all of Earthquake, I would just make sure I have the inverse mask Z script selected and then simply click the all button. This will look at all the subtools on Earthquake here and process that inverse mask functionality. So since Earthquake was unmasked and all his subtools were unmasked, you can see that now he is masked. So it flipped the current state of the masking on every subtool. Now let's say I want to clear the masking across all the subtools and come back over here and click the drop down again. And this time I'm going to select the clear mask Z script. And now I'm going to process that across all the subtools. So now you can see all that masking has been cleared. Now in addition to just using the Z scripts that are currently stored inside of Z Repeated, you can record new ones or even load existing Z scripts. So let's say with Earthquake here, I want to change the material on him to say matcap gray. Well, as you notice, as I change my material over here, Earthquake still looks like he normally did. Because Earthquake has material properties baked into the polypaint of his model. So I need to clear the polypaint across all the subtools on Earthquake here, so I can view him with the matcap gray material. So to clear material on a model, I just need to go to the material palette, select the flat color here, turn on M, and then go to color fill object. Well, instead of doing this process across all these subtools here, I can automate it now with the Z repeated function. So let me just undo those selections there. So turning off M and getting back to the matcap gray. And now I'm going to record a new Z script that will do that process for me. So I'm going to come over here and click record new. And this will now put ZBrush in recording mode. So any processes I do inside of ZBrush here will be recorded as a Z script. So I'm going to come over to the material palette here and open this up. And now I'm going to select that material of flat color. I'm now going to enable the material channel here. So this will allow me to overwrite the material on any subtool. And then I'm going to go to the color palette here and do a fill object. So those are the three processes that I want to do across all the subtools. So after I have those processed with the record option turned on, I can now simply click and record. And now I can type in a new name for the Z script. So I'm going to type in clear material and hit enter. And this will now create a new stored Z script over here. Now at any time, you can come through and edit the Z script manually as well. So if you come over and click this edit Z script button, this will open up an external text editor that will allow you to edit the Z script. So coming over here and simply clicking this will open up notepad here. And as you can see, this is the options that have been recorded. So it has me pressing the material matcap gray, has me pressing the material flat color, has me pressing the draw mode of M, so that's this option here, and then it has me pressing the color fill object option. So you can edit these Z scripts as well after you have them open. So I really don't need to select the matcap gray material for this process. So I'm just going to select that line there and hit delete, and then just save this. And that will now update this clear material Z script. So it will just use these functionalities here. And now I can close this out. So now I have this clear material Z script stored here. So I've recorded it with the record new option here. And I even applied some edits using the edit Z script option. So now that I have this selected, I can now process this across Earthquake. So let's process all of the subtools again. So clicking this button here, 
And this will go through and process that Z script across everything. And I can see all the material properties on Earthquake have been cleared, and I should only be seeing those RGB values. So now if I come over here and select the material of, say, matte cap gray, I'm now going to be able to view Earthquake in that matte cap gray material. So I just cleared the color information out of that model. So using this functionality of storing the Z scripts will allow you to automate a lot of functionality inside of ZBrush. And then at any time, you can come over here and call these options and apply them to your model. So let's say I want to delete all the morph targets across Earthquake. I can choose that option here and click All. And this will now delete all those morph targets. If I'd like to store morph targets across all of Earthquake, I can simply make a new Z script here that will do that process. So I can click Record New. I can now go over to my tool palette here, go all the way down to the morph target area. I can now click Store Morph Target, and then come over here and click End Record. And now I can save this Z script as Store Morph Targets. And now this will create a new Z script there. And so now I can process the store morph target option across all my subtools. And now if I go to the subtool palette here and just scroll through these guys and go to the morph target area, you'll see they all have morph target saved. And now if you want to see what that Z script looks like, you can click the edit Z script button here. Once again, this will open up the external text editor and you can see this is the Z script. So it has recorded that morph target store morph target area. Now, in addition to just using the default text editor on your machine, you can also set a custom editor by using this button here. This will allow you to select an external application for editing the Z scripts. So whichever Z script you have selected here, you can click the edit Z script button and it will open in the editor of your choice. Now, once again, you can record any Z script inside a ZBrush here. And if you want to record actions that do not affect tools, you can come over here and just use this selected option. So let's say I want to always turn on live Boolean. I can do a record new, I can turn on live Boolean, do an end record and save this one as live Boolean on. And now this will save as a new Z script. And then now if live Boolean's off and I click the selected button, it will toggle it on. So you can use the selected option to process Z scripts that are not specifically related to subtools. So this will allow you to record actions inside of ZBrush and then simply process them once. Now the Z repeat it plugin will process any Z scripts inside of ZBrush. So if you record a Z script inside of ZBrush, it will process it exactly how it was recorded. Once again, for additional information on Z repeat it, just simply click the icon here and this open up the cheat sheet. And in here you can find a full description of all the features the plugin contains. So that is it for the Z repeat it plugin. Happy ZBrushing.